Hello, Brent here with ProPride Hitch, and today we're gonna go over the install quick tips. This is the sheet that you can ask for, but we also include it with the manual, and uh, we also include it when we send you a digital file with the uh, manual on that. So uh, I'm gonna start by going over this manual piece, just so that you guys know, because uh, recently we've added the QR codes. It's on almost every page, and if you scan this QR code, it's actually gonna give you information on that section. So this one goes to actually the installer link, as far as like if you needed help installing or you wanted to, uh, a higher smite install, that's this guy right here. It'll go to that link. But each section has its own. So as we go through some of these quick tips, just understand that the install videos are gonna be linked to those QR codes on every single page. All right, so as we go through these quick tips, basically they just go by section. So each, each we've got each section labeled in the booklet here as like measurements, hitch bar measurements, and I'm gonna do the same thing with these quick tips for you. So these are gonna be like little things that people call about all the time, and we just wanted to make sure that you guys had like one resource that you could go to to uh, get at least a heads up on that stuff before you dig into this install. So the first one is gonna be measurements. So we've taken the time to do these nice little Little photos in here we've got all kinds of spots for measurements on here take the time to do these measurements folks take the time because this is what's going to allow you to get your your trailer set up correctly as far as nice and uh, parallel to the ground measuring parallel to the ground in your truck as well these are the numbers you're going to need when you're going into your weight distribution section and we get lots of calls from people like well how do i know how high to put my jack stuff like that boom this is where it's at right there Okay, so the next section is gonna be hitch bar measurements. So this is another one that we get lots and lots of calls on. So I, we've included pictures of every single hitch bar configuration that you could possibly make. All right, so that's number one. So if it's not pictured in there, then no, you cannot arrange your hitch bar in that fashion, so keep that in mind. Second thing, um, when you're measuring the, uh, the, the hitch bar measurements for, I'm sorry, to get your hitch bar measurements, you're gonna measure from the top of the opening, I don't have a truck in here to do that with, the top of the opening of your receiver on your tow vehicle, okay? So you've got the square box there, You'll have either a two inch square box, a two and a half, or a three inch box. It'll be at the top of that opening is where we're gonna be measuring from. So just pull your truck, your whatever you got, tow vehicle wise, measure from the top of that to the ground. That's that number right there. That's your receiver height right there. The trailer height is gonna be measured from the top of this coupler right here, top of this coupler to the ground. So you're gonna take a measurement from that to the ground, which is gonna be probably anywhere from a minimum of 19 inches, 18, 19 inches, all the way up to who knows, you could have 25, 26, if you've got like an inverted. So there's all kinds of different variations with that. Those are the two numbers that you're gonna need for your hitch bar measurement, okay? Okay, so the next piece of this is gonna be, and we get this question all the time. So I've got an auto leveling vehicle. So my vehicle auto levels on its own. So no matter what, it's always gonna go back to the same spot. That's the spot that you're gonna measure from, right? So um, if you've got your trailer and you can still hook it up to your vehicle, I would suggest that and get that measurement. So if you're doing some pre-work before you get your hitch and you've already got your trailer, Go ahead and hook it up to your, your tow vehicle. See where it auto levels at, take that measurement because it's gonna probably go back to that every single time. So no matter what, it's always gonna level back to that. It's usually within about three quarters of an inch of the normal uh, uh, height of it. Usually about three quarters of an inch to an inch of settle or squat, all right? So check that out. And let's see, airbags, same difference. So if you know where you like your airbags, Make sure that you've got it set to that. So say your receiver height of your vehicle is gonna be, let's just say 22 inches, right? 22 inches, and that's when it's normally sitting there and it's kinda of got a little bit of a rake up on it. So as it settles, you're gonna have, uh, maybe it goes to 20 inches or 20, 20 and a half, somewhere in there, right? So you would take that measurement of where you inflate your airbags to. You don't wanna have it higher than 22. You wanna have some settle on it. So maybe it's 21. You know, give it a little bit of settle so you still have some squat on it and take your measurement from there. That's the key for airbags. All right, so now you've got your hitch bar measurements, yeah? And now you're ready to assemble this hitch bar. 
So as I said previously, every single picture of how this can be configured is in the book. It's, uh, I won't even say pages, but there's four pages worth because we may expand the book and stuff, so I want it to be current. So it could be up to, there's four pages worth, there's two pages worth of drop sequences and there's two pages of rise sequences. So keep that in mind. It says drop or rise on those pages as well. Number one thing to remember when you're doing this hitch bar assembly is we've got this guy right here. It's called a tilt pin, right? It's actually a huge rivet, that's what it is. And we've got washers that go on it. Um, we've uh, done some design changes on the receivers probably in the past two years. So you won't necessarily get to be able to use all four washers on the tilt pin all the time. So don't be freaked out. You're like, oh my gosh, I can only get three or I can only get two. Different configurations will allow different washer sets on this, okay? So don't think you'll be able to get four. You may be able to, you may not, but most of them would be a three is max. So we tell you to start out with two, so it's got some tilt to it. But this tilt pin has got to either be in this upper position if these plates are facing up, right? We call these plates. So if you've got a configuration that looks anything like this, all the way from straight all the way up, this bar is not gonna be, it's gonna be difficult for me. All the way up like this, right? Any configuration like that, the tilt pin's gonna be up, okay? So I think that's all the way to like a four inch drop, I believe, right? Then if you're gonna go a little bit crazier and you gotta have a bigger drop, tilt pin's gotta be in this upper side. So you can see there's a hole for that as well, right there. It's gotta be always in the upper spot. So it's always sitting up, just like that. So any of those configurations, it's gonna allow you to do that as well. So that's number one with the hitch bar assembly. So the next thing we're gonna talk about with the hitch bar assembly is gonna be where you put these guys at, right? You've got three of them. And two of them have flat washers on them, and one of them has a split washer on it. So what you're gonna do, you can take that split washer, it's always gonna go the second one up, whatever your configuration is, always second one from the bottom is where it's gonna go. So we can go ahead and do that. Let me get this on the table so I can do it. Line that hole up. Proves to be a little more difficult when you're trying to do it for a camera. Then you've got your second two. One's gonna you know, go at the very bottom, always, always at the very bottom, and always at the very top, like that. The other part that we like to do and make sure is this is snug against this one here. So that tilt pin's nice and snug on there. That's the other part that uh, people a lot of times miss too. And don't be afraid to not tighten these up all the way until you're like completely done and you know that your trailer is where you want it to be. Don't worry about that. Just get this thing nice and tight. You can just use your normal wrench to get it tight. Don't you know go to 200 foot pounds at this time. Just take it to where it's tight, to where you can use it, all right? Okay, so we are to the weight distribution jacks. This is just gonna be on the V2s. So the V2 jack, uh, number one is, don't worry about getting these things like tightened down and right in position when you first install them. Just loosely install these things. So you can go back um, roughly 26 inches if you want, but really this is more, we give you a pretty good buffer there between anywhere from what, 24 and a half to 27 and a half, right? That range. And if you're right within that, you should be good to go. But you've got like a, on our display we don't, but you've got like tanks here, you've got your propane tanks here. Some of you have battery boxes and stuff to contend with. Just loosely install these where you think that they're gonna look right and kind of fit with what you've got going on. Then get that measurement and see if you're within range there. If you have to move your propane tanks up or something, rare occurrence, uh, you can do that. But loosely install these and you can get literally everything else installed too. And then you can kind of fine tune where they go, all right? That goes for the next piece as well, which is the frame bar. So we're gonna move on to that. Oh, one other thing about the jacks. If you can move down here with me, right here, these guys, we say to make sure that these nuts are out. That's what I'm talking about right here. Because this has a piece, uh, a, basically a, a bar here that helps uh, support the bottom of this thing. And if these are turned the other way, you're gonna hit that. You're gonna come in contact with that if you bring these jacks all the way up. So make sure that that's the case. You've got the nuts out on all three of them. These come pre-installed for you. And just make sure you spin it. And when you put this one on, make sure that one's nuts out as well. Cool, thank you. All right, so the next uh, section is gonna be the frame bracket, right? So frame bracket, the goal of this is to basically have this thing centered left to right, so the same amount of distance from here to here on each side, right? And then also underneath here, which we've got another angle here, of having this yoke tail centered on these two downward brackets that come down, 
So you can see it's equidistant between this and this. If you aren't able to do that for some reason, for some reason you're unable to, I'd like you to get as closer to the front rather than the back if you've got to do that, okay? So, but most of the time you can get it centered, it's not an issue. But if you had to do it another way, make sure it's more forward than back, all right? So one of the key things with the frame bracket is also making sure that your downward forks are centered on this yoke tail. That's why you don't worry about this thing being like, like permanently installed at the moment here. Just loosely install it. That way when you get your yoke installed, you can test fit it to make sure it's gonna be centered on that yoke tail like we talked about, and you'll be good to go there. Then you can tighten it. Okay, so one thing about the main hitch unit, that's the next spot, is, and there's not much to it. And literally, I just wanna make sure that you remember to grease the ball on it. We've got a ball that's mounted onto the main unit, and before you couple it, make sure you put a bunch of grease on there, and do that maybe once a year, once 12, 18 months, you can redo that grease on top of the ball. But do that before you couple it, because it's easy to forget, because you're so excited about getting this thing married to your trailer, so. All right, so the next section is gonna be the weight distribution and the spring bars. So. We get a lot of calls on this too, and it's kind of funny because as we're talking, they'll find them. These bushings right here are pre-installed in the main uh, so that they can just travel well, basically. But there's two bolts that hold those in, one on each side, and there's two of these that come already pre-installed. This is what your spring bar is going to. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I see the picture and they're out and I don't see these anywhere, that's where they're at, they're in the bottom of your main. Next thing I wanna talk about is these guys, these little guys, retainer discs. We give you two of them, right? These are the things that hold your spring bars into your bushings that go into the bottom of the unit, okay? These guys, you need to make sure that you take care of them and you don't lose them. But if you do lose them for some reason, you're not uh, completely out, you can use a 3 8 inch hex nut instead if you need to, uh, to replace these or supplement that. Works in the same capacity and it'll be just fine, so no worries about that. Okay, so another common thing that happens when people are doing their installs, they get to the point where they're gonna attach their spring bars to the jacks themselves, right? And they're like, oh my gosh, it's too rigid because it's already it's plugged in my truck. There's no way I can get these things in there. Move these wherever you need, literally. Like if you need to lower these all the way to get to your bars, that's fine. If you need to raise them up all the way to get to your bars, absolutely fine. Do what you need to do just to get them connected. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's not gonna start distributing weight or anything. It's absolutely fine. Okay, so while we're back here, I'd also like to talk to you about making sure that you tighten these up. These are not tightened at the moment. Just get these snug on here is what we need to do. So get it nice and snug on there, but do that uh, at the same time that you're putting these on, just go ahead and tighten them down. That way you don't forget to do it. Okay, and so the same thing goes with underneath the main here with the bushings. Just go ahead and tighten these up. They're just uh, a snug tighten is what we ask you to do because they've got nylon lock nuts on them, okay? So just get those nice and snug so you don't forget later on. And make sure you've already got a little bit of grease on there, right, to help your retainer disc to keep them into the bushing. Go ahead and pump grease in there all the way now while there's no tension on them. And you can uh, just pump them till you see the grease start to come out the bottom like we say in the instructions. But that's another little tip too for you. Just go ahead and get it done so you don't forget. All right, so the next part's the yoke, right? So you've got everything else on. For the most part, you're gonna be connecting this to your main unit. And some things that are key things that you gotta make sure happen is make sure that you've got this centered on those downward forks, if you can, right? As centered as possible. So the yoke tail and that cross beam in the back, make sure that's centered on there. That's number one. And this we'd like to have as parallel to the frame as you can. So this you can see is parallel to the bottom of the frame. That's what we're looking for. This distance, as long as you've got like a half inch or so, you should be good to go on that. Don't worry about that piece as much, is making sure it's parallel to that. You can make that adjustment with this right here. So you literally can push this up. These may be a little bit you know, tight from, from us, but you can literally untighten that, move this up, and this thing flexes, and it's for that very reason, so that you're able to do what I just explained right there. All right, so we're to the final uh, installation and adjustment section right now. So the first thing I say is to make sure that you've got like everything torqued to spec. Now, uh, you can make sure that you've got all this stuff good to go. If it's all lined up and everything, you're ready to go with that, fantastic. Your hitch bar assembly, that's the next thing you're gonna check, is gonna make sure that you're gonna go ahead and put weight onto your tow vehicle. You're gonna raise up your jack, put the weight on your tow vehicle, and see how your trailer is leveling out. 
you're going, to want to, you're going to want to take a measurement for that piece, right? So don't do a bubble level on it and go, well, you know what, it looks like it's per pretty level, unless you've got like an eight foot bubble level. So make sure you take a nice uh, a measurement from the front of the trailer and somewhere in the back that's common. It can be the belly of the trailer. If, if you don't have a frame that goes all the way back, no big deal. But see where you're at. If you're slightly nose down on it, good deal. If you're more than two inches nose down, you may want to adjust your hitch bar to accommodate that. So that's the number one thing right there. So uh, the next piece, that people um, ask about all the time is how high to put these jacks, right? How high? So we tell you to start with five or six inches. That way this is nice and leveled out for you uh, going in and out of it, okay? Hitching and unhitching. So I bring these things up to probably maybe three inches and see where your front end is. That's why we took that measurement in the front, right? So that's the number one thing. You've got your measurement for your front uh, axle or your wheel well to the ground. So say that's 35 inches. When you put the weight of this, maybe it goes up to 36 or 37. I'm gonna bring these bars up to get it back to that original measurement or within about a half of an inch of, uh, of it. So if it's 35, like 35 and a half. But that's what the weight distribution is all about there, is getting that weight back there. If you have a three quarter ton or one ton, it may not measure out the way that uh, I'm telling you right there because suspension is a little bit different with those. It's rather stiff, but you'll know. You can get it up to about two or three inches, and if need be, you can probably even take it to a scale and just kind of see where it looks like or looks like there. But most of the time, two or three inches is perfect for those three and quarter, three quarter and one tons, unless you've got a ridiculous amount of tongue weight. So hopefully these tips helped you out. Um, and I'll, as always, we're here for you. So if you want to give us a call, we're still more than happy to take them. Just trying to help you out beforehand, just give you a little bit more fuel for the fire so you don't necessarily have to take your time to try and call us and get that figured out. But we've got lots of resources. Remember, we've got the installed quick tips. We've got the QR codes on the sections in here of the book that you can check out. They're right there, that little crazy thing. You're just going to get out your phone camera. You're going to like take, like it's going to take a picture. It's going to pull up the website, you just press on it, and then literally go to the YouTube video for that section.